Hello. Yeah, thanks for your interest in this uh, speech of us. One question first. Who's English native speaker and doesn't understand German? One. Okay. Two? Two. Okay, we stay in English. Um, we have the presentation in English, just, uh, just a question in advance. So, um, first of all, we'd like to introduce ourselves. I'm Christine, I'm Christine Plus. Probably you do it by yourself. Yeah, my name is I'm Christine Plus. I'm really excited to be here in Frankfurt today. Um, I'm head of, head of marketing and communications with Hahnemühle, a paper manufacturer located in Dussel. You probably all know where Dussel is, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it is in Lower Saxony, near Göttingen, Hanover. And Hanemühle is the oldest paper mill in Germany. Okay, my name is Stefan Fink. I'm founder and CEO of Fink and Fuchs Public Relations, and my role in this project was uh, pure consultancy, no hands on, just brains. Uh, it was a fun job, and uh, Sasha had contacted me and said, This is tiny, neat, little company doing a job which is not normal for a company of that size. So that's the whole story packed into two lines. Uh, anybody of you working with Hahnemühle paper? Any photographer, painter? Never been in touch with it? Yeah? Satisfied with the paper? Photographers love it. Yeah. Okay. Because for those who don't know, it's a real love brand, but it's an inside love brand for... for artists, um, art photographers, and uh, stuff like this. So, but I don't want to give the description. It's good news on paper since 1584, so the company had its 43, 430th birthday in February. It's our old, oldest clients, and it's, uh, yeah, you describe it best, I think. What is Hahnemühle? Yeah. Let me give you a quick overview about Hahnemühle, some facts and figures as well, what, um, or an idea what to expect from today's presentation. So Hahnemühle, as you already heard, is located in a small village called Dassel, and um, Hahnemühle is quite a small company. So we do have 180 employees worldwide, and with these 180 employees, we do our international business. So we do have subsidiaries in France, UK, US and China and we distribute our products in over 80 countries worldwide with a huge international distributor network. Um, the good thing is we are steadily growing from the economic side as well as from the content strategy side and the digital content as well. So what is Hahnemühle? Hahnemühle, as I already mentioned, is a paper manufacturer. So we are um, producing fine art paper for artists as well as specialty papers for filtration and um, uh, separation purposes. We can consider ourselves to be the market leader when it comes to digital fine art, like you already said, um, for high-end photographies, for art reproduction and something like this as well as a premium brand for traditional artist paper like watercolor, acrylic, sketching, oil, all these traditional ways of painting. Furthermore, we are a leading supplier of special papers already mentioned for filtration and separation purposes. So we have three different business areas that are yeah, quite different from each other. Um, we are international, like I said. We are working international, we try to do our communications international. And all this we are trying to do, and we currently do, with 3.75 um, persons in the marketing department. So this is quite um, little employees on this side. Um, when we were talking about having a digital strategy, having a kind of an idea what content marketing and content management could be for Hahnemühle, um, we considered our old website not suitable enough to do that. Although, there you can see it. Another question we asked ourselves was, do we have enough content for a digital strategy? Bearing in mind, we are a small company. So when, when being called by Hahnemühle, the management did that, and uh, the mission was help us to come from last century into current decade, um, prepare us for the future. Uh, this was what the website looked like. 
This wasn't there at the beginning, this wasn't there. There was nothing like news, there was nothing to interact, there were no social media, nothing. Hahnemühle with a two-level distribution into 86 markets. They have distributors, they have dealers, they never get in contact with their clients unless somebody calls and says, I have a problem with my paper, which is rare, pretty rare. Um, so that's how it looked like. <laughs> and uh, we went into a process to figure out what are the expectations and recommendations for the future. There, were, there are frequent, twice a year, global meetings with all the people in charge in the different markets and subsidiaries. And this is what turned out. A huge mass of tasks in comparison to what was there and in comparison to resources available. So there should be five language support, which we had already. Um, partners should be included. Specific offerings like My Art Registry, where um, artists can enlist their, their artwork and get a certificate for uh, legal right approval, or <coughs> dialogue to the community, and so on and so on. A whole mass of things we collected with the team. Everybody has his personal wish, and we went through that process with the whole organization uh, to figure out what they really want to have online, because online, as everybody in the room knows, is a way to get in touch with target groups. And uh, the lack or the, the, the decrease of importance of paper, especially for a small company like this with a global distribution, online is the key for future success. So we end up with several objectives. Yeah, seeing several tasks like big images, contact points for customers, um, my art registry, a small shop solution, all this is quite a huge, huge, huge project. So what do you do when you have a huge project? You make a plan. That's, that's what we did. We um, defined some objectives that should just help us to find our way um, to a digital strategy. So what did we want to do? We wanted to have a global online presence for all the markets we are on. We wanted to have it for the Chinese market, for the French market, for the UK, for the US. So we wanted to integrate all our activities and future activities into one own single platform under one umbrella named Hahnemühle. We wanted to have more social contact points. We wanted to get in touch with the people, we wanted to get in touch with the customers itself from the B2C perspective. So this was a crucial point. What else was in his objectives? Product, uh, product areas. You uh, remember the um, online presence Stefan um, showed us before. So we wanted to have a clear message, clear access to the different um, business areas, filtration, traditional and digital fine art. We wanted to have it easily accessed. We wanted to have um, an easy way to find dealers worldwide to purchase our products. Um, moreover, we wanted to bundle all activities from the marketing communication in one platform, like an infotainment platform. We wanted to have emotional content, emotional stories around paper itself, how to use paper, what is possible with paper, what does customers worldwide do actually with our paper. And this is really quite interesting. It is not just about painting. Um, we will show you something um, in our presentation. Some people are just so creative when it comes to dealing with paper. And we wanted to have, like I said, the third party content. We wanted to have like a huge hub when it comes to all product-related news and Hardenmüller-related news. Uh, at that point, I would like to, to add one thing. When talking to the management, people were asking, what should we communicate on something like a blog or in a newsroom? We don't have news. They had 17 press releases per year. This was the average of five year, over five years. 17 news doesn't make a big thing. So um, third-party content has a very specific role. Yeah. So having a plan, having all the objectives defined, what shall we do next? Um, when we had a closer look at our website and the whole stuff we wanted to communicate, um, we thought, okay, it might be a good idea to have a design relaunch and perhaps a new logo. So to have this love brand a little bit more 
loving. Um, we needed to have a rapid extension, realignment and integration of everything that was already done in the internet. Um, we needed definitely mobile optimization. As you all, all know, there are several devices. There is a cell phone, there is an iPad. So we need to get mobile. And this integrated newsroom for um, 12 or 15 press releases as well as um, external content needed to be defined. And we wanted to have it for each region and each or end global stuff we wanted to communicate as well. So to put it in a nutshell, we wanted everything. Um, we wanted a global hub for all news, activities, um, everything around the paper and the product news as well. Okay. Um, it's mobile, it's local, it's social on a global scale. And within the project, we're not talking about just successes. There were certain points where you say, oops, yeah, this here was a new idea in the middle of the project. So uh, to, to, to bring up a new corporate, uh, corporate design is uh, quite funny when you are working on a digital strategy. Uh, so it looked pretty compelling. So the big picture we want to, to achieve is the following one. So here's uh, our organization. We generate content. What we had, we had a website. We needed but conversations hub like microsites to be integrated. There were several. Altogether, there were seven to eight different websites from subsidiaries, partners uh, for certain programs, um, all that should be integrated. We didn't have a newsroom, no blogs. Communities, no. Events, shows, classic, working. Mail, newsletter, working. Social media, zero. So, and uh, then we started in Q311. The strategy and the new brand idea was formulated. The process was started to formulate it. Uh, the brand idea process lasted, let, let's say, nine months. Um, then we get into social media for test, Facebook, a little bit of Twitter, one channel. Um, we made guidelines for social media because Americans were working hard on, yeah, we want to go for further. Uh, there are two versions of the guidelines. One is for everybody and the other one is for web workers. Uh, they need to know more about it. It was pretty small at the beginning. It grew, but uh, we, keep, we, we kept it pretty lean. Um, we founded a test platform. We called it uh, uh, Dossier Paper, which was something like a digital press kit uh, on a, plat a blog platform where we integrated third-party content first time. Artists speaking about their products, uh, their perception of Hahnemühle, um, news from others, um, background articles from journalists, um, and we launched this for the paper world, and it was well accepted. It got within one year about 30,000 visitors, which is fine for the beginning. So then we started to slightly to shift from we about us, we have a new product. Yeah, nothing, there are no further news, new product. To, we, had, we talk about paper, we tell stories about paper, and we still tell stories about the applications of our customers. So this is Facebook today. 6,500, close to 6,500 people are following it. Sounds small, all organical, 80% target groups. More than 50% of the content comes from clients. Paintings, pictures, filtration applications. It's a free of charge reference database because everybody says, this is my latest picture printed on Hahnemühle bamboo. Printed on, you know the names better than I do. So this is great. And we were pretty surprised at the beginning that this the, the audience is so open in getting into contact. They didn't use it for complaints. They post here in this area for where the third party posts are normally located in Facebook and we share them up on the, on the front page. So this was a very good experience. Even there were a lot of people in the company saying, hey, what about Facebook? Are you crazy? Uh, we don't want to engage there, it's kids, it's young people, it's not our clients, but it's nowadays pretty well accepted. 
Then we got into stage two. Was it yours or mine? Okay. I need some water, sorry. So stage two was um, more or less digging a little bit deeper to get a whole idea of the new strategy and the whole planning got into the process. Yeah, so planning process, the, the website to be changed was five languages, 800 pages, 16 templates, seven web, present, uh, seven web spots to be integrated. Three and a half people internally. Yeah. External ex uh, imp uh, implementation by a web service company and some small scale consultancy from outside. And uh, we have to deselect the pitch part, the, the partners. So the, the, uh, the web coding company, company was presetted. We made a pitch for the artwork, which, um, for, the, for the redesign. Um, the design bureau of Krakow and Krakow Offenbach did win it. And then we started with the implementation of it in Q2. And in Q4, we launched. And I have, from my perspective, a big compliment for the whole team turning the whole contents, giving them the contents updates, uh, getting all the pictures, uh, videos, and all that stuff we needed for the new website. Because in comparison to the old website, there was one uh, mission. We want to have big pictures. Not these little tiny stems in the for as in the former time. We want to show how good pictures look on our paper. For the upcoming future, we plan deeper integration of the newsletters, uh, more activity in the country-specific newsrooms, and deeper partner and customer integration, which is uh, um, of the most important thing we have to, to, to manage within that web offering. Now, I think you're a little bit nosy how it looks like. That's the way it looks. Let me introduce you to a slightly Colorf more colorful website than before. So what we did, like Stefan already mentioned, we wanted to have big pictures that are transporting emotions, that are transporting the idea what paper is about, what is possible for paper. This stage is, um, as you can see, it rotates, and we likely share there some highlighted news. Of course, new products like usual, but as well, exhibitions, partners, artists, what is new in the world of Hahnemühle? As we learned by looking at our own website, every person would just try to find a suitable paper for, for their needs, and then they would strictly go there. What we wanted to, to do else is to have more news, to have more emotional pictures and content in order to not just directly lead them to the paper they want, to the information, but to other topics that may be interesting as well. So we have here this huge rotating header area. We will have news here, like the blog. There is, for example, this is a, this is a work from an artist who is really, really doing a great work with a very old kind of producing images and artworks. He's doing the lino cut. Then we would have more or less third-party content. We have third-party content from an artist um, that was um, yeah, using our paper for a little bit different story. We will have normal news like PR related, we are at an exhibition, we have a new product with a video, we are having a new um, pin, uh, printing competition um, that um, people can just accept to do this. As well, we have highlights and services located throughout the website. This box is on every single site you will find. This is like... Um, like um, business area related additional news for the digital fine art. It may be, for example, ICC pro profiles. So you need the ICC profiles to do or to, to, to have an, a really good print. Um, you guys just can't print like going to, to a printer and do this. We have this My Art Registry, like a platform where every artist can just 
um, put his image on and do some some ed uh, editorial work with it. We will have certified studios like printing studios who are doing a very fantastic job by printing fine art paper. And we have more or less like like Green Rooster that is um, that is yeah something we will do for our environment currently. Um, what else did we do? We have a color code that is um, showing in the um, primary navigation, digital fine art, traditional fine art, and the filtration. This easily leads um, the customer or the interested person directly to the paper he or she would like to have. And we have, you can see it at the top, not very good, but um, you can see it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the first time we have more or less like contact points. Um, people can get in touch with us, people can follow us, can share us, and this is, I need to jump. <laughs> so this is um, through all pages as well. So we have, for the first time, real contact points to get in touch with our customers, not on the B2B side. Yeah, last but not least is 100% uh, responsive design. Um, for those who are not familiar with this, this is quite a job by itself uh, to, to make a good job on this, that it really works. And absolutely new, the newsroom. The newsroom is something like the second entry to Hahnemühle. Um, it's comparably, we have this changing stage, we have the contact points, we have here, uh, for each of the areas of interest, a button you push, and this changes just content for, uh, for example, for filtration. Yeah, so to deliver a set of information of relevance to the visitor. Uh, we have a block. The block is important to yeah, reproduce content which is not in the form of a press release. It can be simple stories, uh, young people within, within, visiting the paper mill, a phot photographer passing by, and there are a lot of photographers coming, coming along, want to take pictures from these 120 to 150 year old machines working there. It's really impressive when you pass by. It's difficult to get an entry ticket, but uh, it's, it's worth going there if you have the chance. And uh, we have the press releases, we have the integration of the um, social media channels. Uh, up there, buttons for plug and press, and here, changing stage with uh, some featured articles. Um, this free space of the plug is the most important thing. Uh, you will see on the next slide, may I, I, I say it, yeah? Uh, 15 posts per month in comparison to 17 press releases years ago. And, and all done by these colleagues of the marketing communication department. Yeah. So, so um, this is the newsroom. Second level is the content side. Um, this is an article with these ladies dancing with black colored shoes on Hahnemühle paper to, uh, I think it's a nutcracker suite and painting a picture with their feet. Uh, it's a video. Every article has a big picture. Pictures included normally have, uh, are easy to reproduce or to download for those who want to reuse them if the rights are uh, certified. Um, for the beginning, we started with 60 articles representing a history because to start at the beginning with the newsroom, nothing in there, no, it's not worth doing it. Um, this is shared, sharing options in all posts and uh, then concerning the content planning, um, we started with a big Excel, Excel sheet. Nowadays, it's a pin board in the department where there's planned what contents come when and where to post them and where to distribute them. The whole environment is not this big because it's still some social media channels. Um, it's this website, it's multilingual as well, so the people in the headquarter can manage for the whole world if they want to. Uh, it happens if that's an American colleague for marketing is on vacation and we can't uh, afford not to post at that time. So we have something a mixture of centralized, decentralized in the back end here, uh, which is working pretty good to my understanding. You want to make this? I think I took yours, didn't I? Okay. Uh, but it's not just the web, it's, uh, there's mailing and newsletters. We have, there are three existing newsletters which are not deeply integrated into the web till now. This will happen uh, within that year. Um, 
three newsletters for these interest groups. Um, additionally, usage of the database uh, to distribute the content uh, for special events or whatever. And there is one paper-based communication product. It's only produced for shows. As a giveaway, you see it over here. Um, no other paper existing on this in a paper mill. That's yours. So, but um, when we are planning this and when we, we, we started with all these um, strategies and um, gathering all the content, of course, um, like, um, the, uh, like Eric presented before this presentation, it was a crucial task to just convince the board, to convince the owners. Um, as Hannemühle is quite an old company, you need to have a little bit of convincing uh, when it comes to social media, when it comes to online and digital strategy. So we needed um, to convince the management and the organization to do this, to be open, to think open in this and not to just see the numbers. Um, we needed to convince an international rollout and of course we needed to, to have the continuity. It doesn't make sense to have this, to kick it off and then just leave it like it is. And of course we have the speed of technological, uh, technological development. So this is always um, some issues we are trying to keep or we, we are trying to solve to keep up the pace we are currently having. As well the introduction and daily business. Yeah, we need to generate content. So we all know we have these 12 to 15 ideas what to present from our side, but we need to encourage artists, external artists, to give us their artwork, to tell us what they are loving, why they are doing it, and this is um, a tough job as well. So, of course, um, as you've seen in Facebook, there are many customers, many artists who are just willing to present their stuff and we would usually just take this piece of art and put it on our blog. Like um, the, per, the um, Latin American artist and it was Swan Lake that was danced at the, on the mold made paper. paper. Um, another thing, we needed a worldwide distribution and we have to control the international articles, we need to control the um, international topics with a very, very small team. Yeah, concerning monitoring, a question we so often, uh, often ask, the, the website itself is uh, by classical tracking tools. Where does the traffic go? How long will people be there? Which content works and uh, which not? Uh, concerning external monitoring, uh, there are tests underway with uh, Ubermetrics, probably some of you knows that. Uh, it's a social media and content uh, an online monitoring tool delivering uh, the messages to us. Until now, we were working with more or less classical free of charge tools. Um, and this should be, prof um, uh, be more pr uh, professional, yeah, professional um, uh, in the future. So this was the toughest job itself. Yeah, because in a small company like this, everybody, believe me, everybody is part of the process. Yeah, the man in the machine meeting the man from the office at the smoker spot outside the factory. Um, it's great. It's it's terrific. It's it's sometimes funny and sometimes you know what I mean. It's oh no, and but in the end, uh, the project came. And to the point we are now. Now, the question is, what are the results? And uh, in 211 to 213, 42% more visitors, 38% uh, more views, mobile. Um, mobile access exploded after uh, the uh, responsive design. We have now, f it's, uh, the growth rate is 50% and, uh, currently. It's more than 10% of all visits. Yeah, and you can really see the curve month by month. Um, the community had a very positive perception of the web itself. Okay, there are design aspects people are discussing about, but the, the functionality, the offerings and all this is commented pretty good. Um, then it's now SEO optimized because with this process we could optimize all the contents, which wasn't done before. Um, and uh, 
we have better findings in the web concerning uh, different uh, keywords. So if you look for fine art or digital fine art, traditional fine art, you see Hahnemühle on the first page. Um, then the newsroom, it has nowadays 5% of the traffic of the whole website. And as Anne Christine told before, one of the things is people, they use a paper. And uh, they're searching for, that's a paper I know, it's uh, Hahnemühle Bamboo. They get the page and go directly on the product page. And we don't bring them in touch with the news. And uh, one of the aspects was bring the people where the news are. That's the reason because that's uh, why we replicated a lot of the social stuff deep in the website and on the homepage and the newsroom. And the news section before has far below 1% of the traffic before, and nowadays 5% tendency growing. Um, we are optimistic that this will grow, especially when the uh, newsletter integration uh, will be further down the street. For the beginning, we had 152 um, comments, which is fine. Uh, interaction is taking place in Facebook. Blog comments don't work this properly here. The message pickup from media and blogs in the community is fine. What we deliver in there, um, and what really surprised us, the newsletter subscriptions went up by 400% for the monthly subscription rate. So it's now a three-digit number, which is big for Hahnemühle. Yeah. Uh, this was just a launch period, um, and uh, the nicest thing in the launch period should be told. We were sitting in a meeting after the launch, we were watching the numbers, and I had the monitoring on, and I said, I saw a, uh, a Facebook post saying, lousiest design I heard ever, <laughs> I, I've seen ever. Or why does people always make this lousy design? And uh, comment negative, another comment negative. This was one of these design forums with 12 or 15,000 followers. And then step by step, uh, fans of the brand came in and said, hey, I like it, it's good, and so on and so on. The discussion turned. And this led to more than 1,000 wi visitors in the first week, just out of this post. So a critical post can be a positive thing. Um, concerning Facebook, 15% of the non-search traffic comes from Facebook, which is quite good, uh, seen in numbers. Concerning the quality, we come see them later. Uh, it's an organic growth by 25% per year, approximately, probably a lit little bit faster. This I, I've told before. Coming to the quality aspects, we have three areas. Communication, customer commitment and services, sales and costs. Uh, we have a streamlined communication process worldwide. We have a content strategy led by the headquarters, supplied by the local people, or supported by the local people, and um, uh, rounded up with local content. So we. We have the ability nowadays just to push this through into markets, and they, even, they have the ability uh, to bring their own messages into it. We have a raising awareness of the brand. Um, it's far more emotional than before, um, and we have a growing marketing database, which is good. For the customer side, for the first time in the history, certain exceptions beside, Hahnemühle has a direct access to his clients. In Facebook, there are clients of Hahnemühle saying, this is my product, this is my problem, this is my product, my product, my product, look at this, doesn't it look fine, here's my exhibition with your product under the paint uh, I put on it. And uh, it turned out to bring dialogues, it turned out to bring service options, and what's more interesting, innovative ideas or corporations. Um, there's one product which was closed down. People were complaining, not complaining, saying, hey, why did you do that? We want that. And there were a huge number were saying, okay, we want to have that too. And so it was re re revitalized, can we say? Is this right? Okay. Um, so there's a lot of things going on with, uh, let's say, quality effects and business effects. Um, then this openness for the customers of Hahnemühle as a platform to promote themselves. There are further steps planned beside the blog, a simple customer gallery um, where they just can come in, 
to get more references on that paper, um, which is quite good. Sales and costs, definitely more market partners. Market partners feel better supported, more leads, and in a dramatically disastrous market, paper. In the segment, which is stable, fine art, uh, growing revenues, which is very, very good. Um, License-free reference library, we paid thousands of euros before, and nowadays it's just for certain campaigns where one needs, uh, let's say, uh, a celebrity photographer, or so where money is, is paid. Um, so it's a give and take. Um, bloggers, photographer, uh, artists who have blogs come to the to the factory, report on it. So it's there are a lot of things happening, and nowadays the manage really the management and other people see oh there are some effects. This looks like change. We never had a clue two years ago, and uh, we are looking forward to this digital revolution. I think from an outside perspective or semi-outside and semi-inside perspective, uh, Hanemühle is prepared and ready for further steps. Um, we had a warm-up of 430 years and the di digital strategy is two years old and I think there's enough future of in front of us to keep the pace in the digital arena for Hanemühle. So, thank you for your interest. If there are any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you.